Triple Frontier. Okay, so um, do you do you guys know who Charlie? How do you pronounce his name? Is it Charlie Hunnam? Charlie Hunnam. Yeah, Charlie Hunnam is um. Do you know who Charlie Hunnam is? He's an actor. Um, he was um famous for acting uh, acting as Jack Teller in Sons of Anarchy, one of my most favorite TV shows ever. A sh- a show that was so good it made me consider getting a motorbike. And if you know me personally, you know that I'm the biggest pussy in the world. So for me to consider getting a motorbike based on the show I'm watching must mean a lot. But um, um, Charlie Hume plays Jack Teller, who's kind of the lead, kind of you know the, the quote unquote leader of um, Sons of Anarchy, which kind of based on this motorcycle gang. Um, it's a really good um, TV series. I recommend you check it out. But overall, he's a really interesting actor because, for the most part, he's extremely private. He doesn't really, he rarely does interviews. Uh, keeps himself to himself, and he's all about the craft. And in a world where most celebrities are kind of, you know, um, I, I think it's different in acting. Acting, for the most part, they do try to ha- maintain an air of mystique about them. But I think nowadays, with everyone kind of, you know, segueing over to social media land, we you know we see what happened with Will Smith, how he kind of segued into kind of being an influence on social media, um, seeing um, in order to kind of help uh, garner attention for the movies that he's doing. Um, I think in that kind of world or in that kind of era, to have like an actor like Charlie Hunnam, who's like for the most part extremely private, trying to keep himself to himself, is really really refreshing. And um, he recently did this movie um, called Triple Frontier that's out now on Netflix. It stars Ben Affleck. It stars the dude from Narcos. It stars a couple of other people, like it's fucking stellar, stellar lineup of a, of a movie. Now, for me, personally, I watched it the other day. It's not that great. It's not the best movie ever, I think. It got sold. It, it kind of sold me a, a dream. It's probably a lot more. It probably looks better in a trailer. It doesn't actually a movie. It's not offensive, don't get me wrong. Um, but I guess for the most part, it's not as, it doesn't feel as um, special of a moment as it probably should do. Maybe it's because of Netflix. I don't know. Maybe it's because of that. But, you know, it's not as good as I thought it would be. But I like the story that's been told of it, of these kind of, you know, retired ex-Navy SEALs who are kind of pulled back into, um, into the action for kind of one last job. And it kind of speaks about, you know, the things that we hear nowadays about, you know, how how little they're paid, the, the lack of... Um, um, lack of purpose they have once they come back off duty um loads of really interesting kind of psychological things that you never really think about um when you know you know of course if you haven't been involved in the, in the army but he did a really good interview um prior to the film movie's release um, with men's health because he spoke about you know the kind of physical condition that he kind of gets himself into and he's very stringent on physical conditioning and really kind of get himself into character and i think he did it a lot with king arthur he did it with a movie before previously where he kind of cut down to maybe 13 stone he's probably the same height as me so that's extremely skinny and then he spoke about a bit more when it came to this movie triple frontier and he kind of bulked up a bit more to kind of have that kind of robust rotund kind of um, navy seal sort of look and um throughout the whole interview he kind of speaks really glowingly about his training practices but the most one of the best parts i think i'm going to get up here on the screen um he speaks about let me see if i can get on here no Da, 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 da. he also speaks about his admiration for jordan peterson right somebody who i've been a real big fan of um and kind of the books that he reads and stuff. And again, I, I I just like that. You know, I mentioned it previously in the beginning of the podcast that, you know, I found it a bit difficult these last couple of weeks to kind of maintain motivation and kind of keep going and doing the things I'm doing because, you know, I'm seeing little to, low, little to no progress in some of the things I'm doing. But I like that sometimes you read these interviews with these high achieving people and you start to realize that, you know, the biggest, the people that you want to emulate, the ones that are kind of your motivation, your inspiration, are doing the things that you're doing, right? Just need to keep keep your head down, keep on course, and you'll be fine. And there's a bit where he mentions um, about the books that he reads, and, it, and it's all basically um, the books that I'm um, really into, right? So um, this is his chapter. This is his bit on Jordan Peterson, right? Where is it? Uh, the, where is it? Ba, 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 ba. Let's see, Peterson. Oh, where is it? There. Okay. Uh, in Triple Frontier, you're playing a spit. This is a, this is an interview from um, Men's Health magazine, right? So uh, the title is, uh, this is what Charlie Hunnam's training was like for Triple Frontier. And they do that for most of these kind of movies. They have like a Men's Health article that kind of talk about the training that guys did for it. Because I think most dudes, when they go watch these movies, they're like, oh shit, how did he get that ripped? Right, that's what we were thinking about. But anyway, it says here the following. Um, in Triple Frontier, you're playing a former Special Forces soldier and you worked a lot with a steel trainer. What did you learn from that experience? And Charlie says the following. I really love the sense of seriousness with those guys. There's no sense of there's no sense of life being trivial. There's no flippancy, no triviality to those guys. They were just very, very serious. I really enjoyed that. I'm a big fan of Jordan Peterson, as are a lot of people right now. He's become quite an internet phenomenon, a card carry member of the intellectual dark web. I love the message that he promotes, which is take your life seriously. 
carry as much responsibility as you can. And I think in his world, he says, pick up the heaviest thing that you can and carry it. This is what this is what this was very much the philosophy and mentality of these special forces guys. I really enjoy being around that sensibility. In this day and age, everyone's grown soft and entitled. It's like, no, guys, you're not entitled to anything. It's like be your fruits. It's like by your fruits you shall know them. It's like a, a famous Bible scripture, and that and that just speaks to the importance of getting out there and working for yourself. L from living in Hollywood and being exposed to a lot of people of the film industry, I found the attitude of those special forces guys to be really, really refreshing. Which is kind of an awesome take, right? And something that I kind of again thought about a lot in my life. Um, that kind of level of seriousness and having that uh, having involving adopting a level of seriousness in your work that is kind of really abnormal, right? Doing the I think um to achieve what's that go quote something about to achieve um impossible goals you have to do the impossible thing right or the abnormal thing um and i think that is what is needed right for the most part and i think if you listen to jocko warnick's podcast um he wrote extreme ownership um you get that sense of seriousness with him it can sometimes be a bit heavy and a little bit too much but i think there's something about there's something in that kind of idea of like taking your work very seriously being very methodic about the things that you do when it comes to training when it comes to diet when it comes to what what you drink, when you drink, right? Like now I've decided um, these last couple of weeks, especially after I had my little bit of a hiccup of last week that I'm not going to have any alcohol in the house. If I want to drink, I have to go outside, have a beer. Or I have to go outside, have a bit, not having any bottles of anything in my house. Like really being sense, really being strict of how you kind of regiment your week, how you regiment your life. And then hoping that that kind of will transpire into the things that you're doing outside of it. And I think there is something to it. There's something to it. And again, it can be intense. It can put people off. But I think in this day and age where everyone is quite trivial, and there is a lot of flippancy and there is a lot of flip floppancy and people are getting really committed to like for instance like think about the Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thomas thing that happened the other week right a couple weeks ago it was all over the news right Jordan Woods on a red table everyone's talking about it. it's the fucking biggest news ever you can't get away from it everyone's involved everyone's talking about it what now right what now people are wasting so much time worrying about things that were not within their control things that have nothing to do with themselves right things that are going to just distract you from the overall goal that you're missing you're missing the target you're getting yourself confused and distracted by all this other nonsense outside when it doesn't really matter when if you're really serious about what you do you're going to be like look uh, god bless those guys um i hope they work things out but i need to get my life in order and that's basically the name of the game and that's what i like from what charlie Hume said here in this interview and it continues as well um scroll down here Da, 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 da. He says here, okay. Oh, where's it, where's it mentioned again? Jordan Peterson. Da, 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 where's he says he mentions it again here. Okay, yeah. You mentioned um, Jordan Peterson as somebody uh, whose philosophy you find interesting. And again, you have to mention, you have to remember, right? When you when you had this interview, you got a lot of stick on on social because you know Jordan Peterson is like the he's like the black cross. He's he's, he's at the he's at the cross symbol um, for leftists, right? And they really hate him. I don't know why. Again. I think some, some maybe sometimes they misconstrue the stuff that he says about Bill 616 and um, uh, using pronouns and stuff. I think maybe they misconstrue some of the stuff. But for the most part, he's, you know, he's somebody that I've kind of looked up to for a long, long time. He's brought, brought me a lot of value. I've gone to see him speak. I'm going to see him speak again when he comes in um, the UK in June. But anyway, um, he got a lot of stick when he mentioned the fact that he's a big fan of Jordan Peterson. But the, the fact that he's not on social media, the fact that he doesn't really do any interviews, he's probably not going to ever find out that this he got that much stick. And I love that, that side of um, Charlie in the first place. But he says this in the following. He says, um, the interview asked him, um, you mentioned Jordan Peterson as somebody's philosophy you find really interesting. Who else um, do you read when you're looking for eye of the tiger mentality, preparing your role for like this? Um, he says the following. Um, in my 30s, I've become pretty vicarious reader, which is, again, something late in life. This is why I like these interviews with people that, I guess, I guess a good cheat method. I guess I feel I mentioned it a few times, people. But a good cheat method in order to kind of get to where you want to get to is to read interviews with people that you look up to. Usually, by and large, right? By and large, usually they're doing things right. And they're going to give you a little nugget, a little insight into something that you could be doing that you could apply to your life that would also help you to get to who you want to get to. Just read more interviews. Whether it's an interview or autobiography, read more personal accounts of people they look up to. And trust me, trust me, they'll give you the keys. And none of this look into other influencers who are doing bullshit stuff no fuck them look at the look at the look at what the influencers looking at like who's their person that they're targeting go to that person read what they're reading don't go to don't get second information from those guys for the most part they're just chances in my opinion um here we go in my 30s i've become a pretty vicarious reader i read a lot of fiction for the lot uh for the for the love of it and i read a lot of non-fiction specific to this experience i read a lot of sebastian younger i read that book too called tribes it's fucking awesome um a couple of times which i would think is an exceptional book i read sebastian younger's war which i also have also read i read Jocko wernick extreme ownership which i have as well down here somewhere right da, 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 where is it 
Got so many books, I don't know where they are. So many books. Where is it? I had it somewhere here. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Ba, ba, ba. I got it here. So stream ownership, you can see on the screen. I'm gonna put it up there because I spent so much time getting it, and it doesn't make no sense. But here, there's me. Look, all the books that I have, he has too, and I love this guy. I, I didn't know he'd read this much. This is the first interview. I've, this is the first interview I've read of him from a while where he's mentioned the books he reads. I had no idea he was into this sort of shit. Um, again, it makes sense for Triple Frontier because it's based on Navy Seals, and this is you know, Joko Wernick is a Navy Seal or was a Navy Seal. Um, you always Navy Seal, right? I'm sure. Anyway, um. Um, how Navy Seals lead and win. Um, I read on Killing, which I've I've read. I've read that psychological. Co- no, I've not read that. I've not the last two. I haven't read. Um, and you know what I'm going to read next, right? Since he's kind of mentioned these kind of books. Um, and he and he is the following. Um, so I read a lot of military oriented stuff. It's always specific to the role, just for my own education and enjoyment. I read a lot of books about human condition, particularly the human condition in relation to spiritual practice. Mostly helps me in my life. Life is very very complicated. I agree. Um, I subscribe to I subscribe to hell and to I subscribe to hell and heaven on earth. I think that the axiom of life is that life is suffering. That's what all the great religions have taught us. So I think there's a personal responsibility. All almost like a campaign to try every day to balance the scale so to derive as much meaning from sense of individualistic purpose as we can that's in a nutshell my philosophy and general outlook i fucking love it i love him and i'm a big fan of him i love him and everything that he does and yeah man charlie hunum man the fucking absolute legend that is the legend charlie hume um great interview it's on now it's on um again it's, it's just refresh just nice to read an interview with somebody that you look up to that you like and then to find out that they are you know they are who you imagine them to be right there's something about that and again i don't want to meet the guy or i don't want to never meet your heroes i'm that kind of i like to keep my people um at arm's length and i'm sure he would not give a flying fuck about me but i just like when you find out that someone you look up to is fucking cool as shit and they like the stuff that you like because it kind of gives you an understanding of like oh now i see what i saw now i know why i saw something in him that i like that i kind of wanted to follow um and again the idea that he's not on social media that he's a bit he's a bit of a unicorn in that sense right because he looks really good on camera he could easily be on social parading his family and you know showing off and he probably could get more roles that way too he's probably missing out a lot not getting not probably missing out a lot of roles not being on social and i'm sure he's managed he's not told him that but he's made a his mission to kind of put his flag in the ground to be a serious actor do serious things, read a lot, train a lot, and just commit himself to any side of role he does. And for the most part, the fruits of his labor have been shown. Um, and yeah, I recommend you check out Triple Frontier. It's available now on Netflix. Again, like I said, it's not the best movie in the world, but it's an easy watch if you want to watch something on a weekend and you're, not, you know, you're just chilling out with your friends or whatever it may be. Uh, Triple Frontier out now on Netflix. It starts Ben Affleck too. Ben Affleck's really good in it too, actually, which is, people always say that because I think for the most part, people, you know, tend to discount Ben Affleck and, you know, because, you know, you can, he's a bit of a, you know, not the coolest dude in the world and maybe the thing after sam harris might have tamed him a bit but um ben affleck there's no denying ben affleck's a good actor and that movie he kind of reminds us of that fact 